How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Last time, we finished up the mini trial of sorts with Kagatora at the Thrifty Mega Mart, getting an EVMZ for our troubles. And this time, we're going to be showing off the island scan feature. So, with firing up the QR scanner on the menu with X, we can scan a couple of QR codes. Now, I'm gonna be running down the island scan and QR scanner feature right now before I talk about all of the different things involved in it as far as Pokemon encounters go, because there are a lot of them. So, by scanning QR codes, you can mark a Pokemon as seen in your Pokedex if you haven't already, and I will leave a link to the website I specifically used for scanning these QR codes throughout this entire episode, down in the description below. At one, in one session, one sitting, you can scan up to 10 QR codes, and if you want to scan even more, if you've already scanned a few ahead of time, you know, just testing out the feature, uh, there is a two hour wait period for one of those slots to refresh. So, you cannot cheat the system by changing your 3DS's time. It will reset the slots that are available to use for scanning QR codes to zero each and every time, so don't even think about it. Trust me, I learned that from experience. Uh, you can't also scan in the same QR pattern over and over again per island scan, so unfortunately, you can't keep scanning in a Rowlet QR code over and over. So each scan is worth 10 points for normal QR patterns, but special patterns like Magirna, who we got uh, many episodes ago now at this point, those QR patterns are worth 20 points. Every 100 points will net you the ability to use the island scan feature, where different Pokemon will appear depending on the island you're currently on, as well as depending on the day of the week. After scanning the island that you're on, you will have one hour to find and capture the Pokemon that is searched for. The scanned Pokemon, thankfully, cannot call for allies, but if you knock it out or catch it, the scan will end immediately. Running away from the battle yourself, however, does not affect this, meaning you could run away and reset its nature, ability, and some of that other values that are hidden deep, deep down in the code. As I just previously mentioned, depending on the day of the week and the island you're on, there will be different Pokemon that appear. So on Mele Mele Island, on Mondays you will find Totodiles at level 12 in the Seaward Cave. On Tuesdays you will find Dinos at level 13 in Ten Carat Hill. On Wednesdays you will find Horsies in Kalei Bay at level 18. On Thursdays you will find Clinks in Hawoli City at level 8. On Fridays, you will find Chikorita on Route 2 at level 10. On Saturdays, you will find Witwicks in Howoli Cemetery at level 10. And on Sundays, you will find Cyndaquils on Route 3 at level 12. Each of these Pokemon on Mele Mele and the other respective islands all also can come with an egg move. There are only two Pokemon, however, I think that don't have them, including Clink, which I just went over. Uh, but yeah, most of these Pokemon, except, yeah, all but two I think if I remember correctly, all have egg moves, which is actually a really nice feature. And of course, the island skin is a feature that only resides in Alola, which means it's a cool feature that never returned, just like many other that came before it. I say that loosely though, considering... The island scan feature is a bit tedious to do, because it took four, five, six days, I honestly lost count at this point, in order to fully make this episode, so... It's kind of rewarding, but also not... I don't know, maybe it's up to you, but... It was... Fine making this episode and recording all this footage, so... Leave that as you will. And now moving on to Akala Island. On Mondays, you will find Sfeels on Route 7 at level 19. On Tuesdays, you will find Luxios on Route 8 at level 20. On Wednesdays, on at the Akala outskirts, you will find Hone Edge at level 23. Thursdays, you will find Venipede on level 4 at level 14. Fridays, you will find Bellsprouts on Route 5 at level 16. On Saturdays, you will find Meryl in the Brooklet Hill at level 17, and on Sundays, you will find Gothita on Route 6 at level 17. 
So if you have a keen eye, like, you know, the Pokemon ability, <laughs> get it? Anyway. You might have noticed when I was catching Horsey, after I caught Horsey, you didn't see a Pokedex registration happen. That's because all of these Pokemon that I've already brought up and will bring up for the remaining islands are not native to Alola, hence why they're only available via island scanning. Now, the thing about that is, there is no national decks in the Alola region. Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon do not have a national Pokedex. Sword and Shield was not the first game to not feature the national Pokedex. Although to be fair, although this is kind of rectified sort of now with Pokemon Home, to be fair, although there is no national Dex in Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Moon, you can transfer Pokemon through Pokemon Bank into the games, all the older Pokemon before Generation 7 at the time. However, they do not have Pokedex pages. They are all in the game, but they don't have Pokedex pages. The National Pokedex technically did not exist in Generation 7. Especially when you count Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, because that went back to only the 151. But there was really not a lot of outcry about the National Dex being missing for Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon compared to Sword and Shield. I honestly don't understand why, maybe... It was the whole situation, like I said, Pokemon Bank, you could technically transfer all of them into the game, but they don't have Pokedex descriptions. There are 500 plus Pokemon that don't have Pokedex descriptions in Sun and Moon, because the National Dex didn't exist in Sun and Moon either, and yet people freaked out in Sword and Shield. I'm not one to judge, but I think it's a little hypocritical personally. I like how I said I'm not one to judge and then I judged anyway. I think it's a little hypocritical how people didn't really freak out about no national Pokedex in Sun and Moon, and then Sword and Shield happened, and maybe it's situations mixed with Sword and Shield's development that didn't really help, but there was no national Pokedex in Sun and Moon either. So uh, I'm just saying, maybe the hate that Sword and Shield got wasn't really warranted. Moving on to Ula Ula Island, on Mondays you will find Swinubs at the Tapu Village at level 31. On Tuesdays you will find Duosian on Route 16 at level 33. In the Ula Ula Meadow on Wednesdays you will find Roselia at level 34. On Route 10 on Thursdays you will find Staravia at level 27. On Fridays you will find Vigoroth on Route 11 at level 27. On Saturdays at Mount Hokulani, you will find Axews at level 28. And on Sundays at Blush Mountain, you will find Rhyhorn at level 30. And lastly, because you cannot find Pokemon at Aether Paradise, we move on to Pony Island. On Mondays, you will find Conkeldur on the Pony Plains at level 57. On Tuesdays in the Pony Gauntlet, you will find Togekiss at level 59. On Wednesdays in the Pony Meadow, you will find Levani at level 57. On Thursdays at Executor Island, you will find Superior at level 43. On Fridays in the Pony Wilds, you will find Samara at level 43. And Saturday, you will find Embor at level 43 at the Ancient Pony Path. And then Sunday, last but not least, is Electros in the Pony Grove at level 55. Honestly, I love Gen 5, but even still, Pony Island honestly offers the best island scan Pokemon, not gonna lie.
So before we get into the final part of the QR scanner slash island scan feature, I want to show the official artwork of the QR scanner slash island scanner on screen right now. Just look at that goofy face by the player character in this artwork. Oh my god, why did they get prove that? And to wrap up this episode, there are actually five special QR code patterns that were released, I think, officially via global missions, like the second global mission they ever did in the Festival Plaza, uh, to earn points, obviously. So here are the special five QR patterns worth 20 points each, which conveniently will net you a pretty much freebie island scan, any island that you want it. And that wraps up the QR scanner slash island skin feature in Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, honestly, that took a lot less time compared to recording the actual footage than it did putting the episode together and how long this episode's gonna end up being. So, I guess there's some little tidbit I can talk about to add some time to this video. Uh, so, if I open up the X menu, you can actually move around the icons on the bottom screen to your liking. So I could move the QR scanner back to the second page, or Pokepelago back to the second page, and vice versa. I can rearrange everything. I can pretty much make it to where I'd have to go to another screen to access my Pokemon in my bag. It's kinda cool. I wish, you know... It wasn't such a throwaway thing, and they don't even point it out to you. It's just like, hey, you have a touchscreen, so you can rearrange this how you want it. They never really talked about that. Like, in game or just in general, like, in real life, they don't point that kind of stuff out. So, in case you wanted to mess around with your X menu, then there you go. That's, uh, that's a thing for you. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon. And honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to do next time, because there are still some more things I can do before going back to the Pokemon League and defending my Alola Championship. So I'll probably leave the next episode a surprise as well, at least to me, because you'll already know what it is based off the title and the thumbnail. But until then, thank you for watching, and I will catch you later.